The Life Cycle of a Wolf. What is a wolf? A wolf is a mammal. A mammal is a warm-blooded animal. Its body stays about the same temperature no matter how hot or cold the air around it becomes. Every mammal has some hair or fur on its body. A wolf has a heavy coat of fur that keeps it warm. A female wolf gives birth to live babies. Babies feed on milk produced inside their mother's body. The Canid Family Wolves belong to the dog family, Canidae. This family also includes coyotes, jackals, and domestic or pet dogs. There is only one species of wolf called Canis lupus. Its common name is gray wolf or timber wolf. All wolves belong to the same species, but they do not all look alike, just as dogs do not all look alike. Wolves that live in different habitats have adapted or changed to suit their surroundings. The arctic wolf, for example, has shorter legs than those of other gray wolves. Its fur is often light in color, which helps the wolf blend in with its snowy home. Its wild relations. The coyote, or Canis latrans, is sometimes called a brush wolf or prairie wolf, but it is not really a wolf. It is much smaller than a gray wolf. Scientists believe that the red wolf, Canis rufus, is a hybrid. It has both coyotes and gray wolves as ancestors. The red wolf is smaller than a gray wolf, but larger than a coyote. Until recently, the most endangered wolf in the world was believed not to be a wolf at all. Canis simensis, the simian wolf, lives in the Simian Mountains of Ethiopia and Africa. It is about the size of a coyote. Sadly, there may be as few as 500 simian wolves living in the wild today. Where do wolves live? Wolves are found in the northern parts of North America, Europe, Africa, Russia, Asia, and the Middle East. In the wild, they live in various habitats or surroundings. Wolves live in forests and deserts and on mountains, plains, and the tundra. Most wolves live in the purple part up here of, of North America, around Canada. Few and far between. In the past, wolves lived in more places than did any other land mammal except humans. In North America, they lived from the Arctic to Mexico. Today, wolves are still found in many parts of North America, but most live in Canada and Alaska. The wolf populations in the United States and Mexico are much smaller. In fact, wolves are an endangered species in most regions of these countries. This map shows the areas in which wolves live, but do not be fooled, there are only about 40,000 wolves living in all that space up there around Canada and Alaska. In the past, forests were the natural homes of wolves. Today, very few wolves can be found in wild areas. In regions where wolves are no, no longer live in the wild, some live in zoos, as shown above, right here. Part of a pack. Wolves live in groups called packs. Packs are made up of related wolves, usually parents and their offspring. Most packs have six or seven members, but some have more than 20. The wolves in a pack live together and work as a team to hunt other animals. Now, if you see here, the alpha wolves above survey the land while their pack mates below play in the snow. The leaders of the pack. Wolf packs are led by a pair of wolves called the alpha male and female. Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet, and it means first. Alphas are usually the only wolves in a pack that have offspring. Younger wolves are less powerful, so they follow the leadership of the alphas. Pack territory. A wolf pack lives in a territory or area of land that it defends. A territory must have plenty of fresh water and enough prey to feed all the pack members. In places where several packs live close together, territories may be small. Where packs are spread out, territories can be huge. Wolves mark the boundaries or borders of their territory with scent. They move along the edges of their territory and leave urine on scent posts or upright markers, such as tree stumps. Wolves mark the scent post constantly so that other wolves will know to stay out. Wolves have a very strong sense of smell. 
They use their noses to identify other pack territories and detect any strange wolves that enter their territory. Wolves always travel close to a water source such as a river because they need to drink a lot of water during the day. Wolf tongues are shaped to lap up large amounts of liquid quickly. What is a life cycle? Like all animals, a wolf goes through a series of changes called a life cycle. It is born and then grows and changes until it becomes <coughs> excuse me, a mature or adult wolf. Once an animal is mature, it is able to mate or make babies of its own. When the babies are born, a new life cycle begins. An animal's lifespan is the length of time it is alive. Wolves in the wild usually live for about eight years. In rare cases, some live up to 16 years. Captive wolves may live even longer. The life cycle of a wolf. A wolf's life cycle begins with the birth of a baby wolf or pup. Wolves are usually born in litters of two to seven wolves. The pups spend their first weeks of life in a den or shelter with their mother and litter mates. They nurse or feed on their mother's milk. When they are a month old, the pups meet the rest of their pack. The pack feeds and protects the pups until they can fend for themselves. Some wolves stay with their pack for the rest of their lives, but others leave to join another pack or start a pack of their own. Here you have a one day old pup, a pup at three weeks, a pup at eight months, and an adult wolf. A litter is born. Wolf pups are born in the spring. Pups gestate or develop inside their mother's body for nine weeks before. When the mother wolf is ready to have her babies, she goes into her den where it is safe and quiet. She gives birth, one at a time, to as many as 10 pups. The tiny pups each weigh about one pound or 0.5 kilograms. They are blind and deaf and they need their mother to keep them warm without heat with, sorry, heat from her body. As each pup is born, the mother licks it clean. She guides the pups to the nipples on her underside where they begin to nurse on milk. Snuggled up. For the first weeks of their lives, the pups do nothing but sleep and eat. They stay huddled in the den with their mother who leaves them only to make short trips outside for water and food. She stays close to the pups to protect them and keep them warm with her body heat. You see above, when the pups are two to three weeks old, they can see and hear. The pups have blue eyes when they are born, but their eyes turn gold as they grow. And down at the bottom, these small pups are taking their first peek at the world outside their den. Joining the pack. When the pups are about a month old, they are ready to leave the den for the first time. They slowly make their way to the entrance where their mother and the rest of their pack mates are waiting. When the pups come out of the den, the other wolves nuzzle and sniff their bodies to greet them and learn their scent. And see here, mother wolf has led her three week old pups out of the den. She lies patiently as they nurse. Team effort. The entire pack now helps look after the pups. The older wolves watch out for predators such as hawks and eagles, which might try to snatch the small pups. While the rest of the pack is away hunting, one adult always stays behind to guard the pups and care for them. You see here, this adult female gently lifts a pup with her strong jaws. The meeting place. When the pups are eight to 10 weeks old, they leave the den for the last time and follow the pack to a rendezvous site or meeting place. This location will be their home for the next few weeks. After that, the pack will choose a new site in their territory about every three weeks baby food. The pups continue to nurse, but they also begin to eat solid food. After a meal, adult wolves return to the rendezvous site and regurgitate or bring up some food for the pups. The meat is partially digested, so it is easy for the pups to eat. It is also easier for the adults to regurgitate food than to carry whole chunks of meat to the pups. When adult wolves return from a hunt, the pups eagerly greet them. They lick and nip the corners of an adult's mouth to signal they want to be fed.
learning to hunt. While their mother hunts with the pack, the pups spend their time playing. They wrestle, run, chase, and stalk one another. These activities keep the pups busy and help them develop the skills and strength they will need to hunt with the rest of the pack. When the pups are about six months old, the pack stops using the rendezvous site. The pups must now travel with the pack. They also begin to hunt small animals for practice. By the time they are 10 months old, most cubs are able to hunt with the pack. Feeding the gang. Pups must become good hunters in order to help the pack survive. Each pup develops its own skills, such as fast running or quiet stalking, and learns how to hunt as part of a team. The wolves must work together or they will go hungry. Even experienced packs succeed in catching prey only once in every 10 tries. An adult wolf can eat up to 20 pounds or 14 kilograms of food at one sitting, but it often goes for days without a meal. The pecking order. The pack does not eat together. First, the alphas will eat their fill. Alphas protect the entire pack, so it is important that they stay strong and healthy. The other wolves then get a chance to eat in the order of their rank or place in the pack, as we'll see on pages 18 and 19. Wolves hunt large animals such as this moose, you see up here, because they are big enough to feed the, the, all the pack members. And down here, wolves trot with their heads down low, sniffing the ground to pick up the scent of prey. Finding their place. Each wolf has a rank in the pack. The alpha pair is in charge and every other wolf is ranked below these wolves. Next in command are the beta male and female. The lowest ranked wolf is called the Omega. It is often bullied by the others and is last to eat after a hunt. High ranking wolves are more dominant than the others in the pack. They are large, strong, and aggressive. Lower ranking wolves are submissive. They usually back down when challenged. If you see here, older wolves are scuffle to assert themselves, but down here, younger wolves play together to determine their dominance. Top dog. Pups of the same age find their place by ranking themselves in their age group. Their rank can change several times before they reach two years of age. By then, each wolf's role in the pack is set. From their first days in the den, new pups establish their ranking. One pup in the litter may act dominant, but another may soon become even more dominant. The ranking then changes. Learning wolf talk. To hunt and live as a pack, wolves must communicate. Pups start learning about body language, facial expressions, and wolf sounds when they are first introduced to the pack. Body language sends many different messages. For example, wolves show affection by licking or nipping at the corners of one another's mouths, just as they did when they were pups. They show their rank with the position of their tails and ears. An alpha wolf keeps its tail high and its ears perked up, the Omega Wolf shows submission by holding its tail between its legs and its ears flat against its head. Other wolves show dominance or submission by keeping their ears and tails between these two positions. Large pups greet an Alpha Wolf here in the middle with low submissive bodies and affectionate sniffs and licks. Why the sad face? Wolves also communicate a variety of messages with their faces. Some scientists believe that wolves use as many as 20 different facial expressions. Wolves curl their lips, bare their teeth, narrow their eyes, and even stick out their tongues to show their moods. Howlin' Wolf The most famous wolf talk is the howl. Wolves howl to signal the start of a hunt, to locate another wolf, or to answer another pack's howls. Each wolf has its own voice, and wolves are better at recognizing one another's voices than people are. Their voices are expressive as their faces. Wolves can change the sound of their howl and they know how to use echoes to make their pack sound larger than it is. This trick helps them defend their territory against other packs. Wolves make other noises too. They snarl, growl, and whimper just as dogs do. Ready to mate. When wolves reach adulthood, their instinct to mate becomes very strong. Female wolves reach maturity at about two years of age. Male wolves do not become adults until they are three years old. A mating pair. In a wolf pack, only one pair mates. 
the mating pair is usually the alpha pair unless one of the alphas is not interested in mating. In that case, a beta wolf may mate in its place. The mating wolves become very affectionate with each other and spend almost all of their time together. Mating season. Wolves mate only once a year, usually between January and April. This period is called the mating season. All adult wolves want to mate at this time, but the alpha pair stops the other wolves from mating by intimidating or scaring them. Mating season is tense, but life returns to normal when it ends. Preparing for birth. About six weeks after the female wolf becomes pregnant, she starts to prepare for the birth of her pups. First, she selects a site for her den. She chooses a spot that is deep in her pack's territory where she and her pups will be well protected. Just the right spot. The site must be sheltered and hidden from view. It also needs to be near water so that the mother can go for a drink without leaving her cubs alone for too long. These wolves are checking out the site of a new den, which the female will need very soon. Digging a den. Wolves sometimes make dens in caves or rotten logs, but most dens are burrows or underground holes. A pregnant wolf digs a tunnel between 10 and 12 feet long, 3 to 3.5 meters. She makes the entrance just big enough to fit her body. She digs one chamber or room to sleep in and another one at the end of the tunnel where she will have her pups. Pitching in. As the day for giving birth draws near, all the pack members help their mother prepare. They bury chunks of meat near the den. This hidden cachet or store of small meals will keep the mother strong while she lives in the den with her pups. After nine weeks of pregnancy, the mother gives birth. With each pup, a new life cycle begins. Wolves will sometimes use the same den more than once. They may need to use an, another animal's abandoned den if it's large enough for the mother and her cubs. And here you got the cave, a burrow, and a hollow log. Leaving the pack. Many young wolves leave their packs when they become mature. They are called dispersers or lone wolves. Scientists are not sure why lone wolves leave. The wolves may have such a strong need to mate that they go in search of a partner or they may be forced out of their pack for reasons scientists do not yet know. On the prowl. A lone wolf has to leave its pack's territory and stay out. The pack will not let a disperser stick around. Lone wolves must also avoid neighboring wolf territories. They often travel long distances along the boundaries of other pack's territories before they find hunting land that has not been claimed by other wolves. Starting fresh. Lone wolves live and hunt alone until they find a mate, usually another lone wolf. Together, the two dispersers may become a mating pair. They mark their new territory and stay within its boundaries. When their first litter is born, they start a new pack of their own. Dangers to wolves. Humans pose the biggest threat to wolves. When European settlers first arrived in North America, there were wolves everywhere. The settlers believed that wolves were a danger to them and to their livestock, so they hunted as many wolves as they could. Governments even put a bounty on wolves. People hunted them and received a cash reward for every wolf they killed. Bad reputation. Today we know more about wolves and fear them less. Some people, however, still think that wolves are pests. Many farmers and ranchers believe that wolves are a danger to their animals. Some hunters think that wolves kill too many game animals, such as elk and caribou. Scientists disagree with the hunters. They argue that wolf packs actually keep game herds healthy because they hunt the old and sick animals. Crowded conditions. As cities grow, the natural habitats of wolves are reduced. Wolves are forced into smaller areas where there is not enough food for all of the animals. Many cannot find enough to eat and they starve. Close living also increases the risk of diseases being passed from wolf to wolf. Sick wolves often spread illnesses to other animals. A single outbreak of disease can kill many wolves, especially if a no large number of wolves lives in a small area. Helping wolves. Today, many people work to protect wolves. In some areas, land has been set aside to create wolf preserves or safe natural habitats for wolf packs. These preserves are open to visits from the public. 
Scientists also help wolves by constantly learning more about them. By studying the behavior, habitats, food sources, and travel routes of wolves, scientists can help protect these magnificent creatures. They can monitor the health of wolves and fight outbreaks of disease. Learning more. You can help wolves by learning all you can about them. Wolf websites will give you up-to-date information about wolves and the people who work hard to protect them. These sites will also connect you with wolf lovers all over the world. You can start at www.wolfweb.com, www.wolf.org, or www.canids.org. When wolves are safe and healthy, they have babies, and with each pup, a new life cycle begins. The end.